Good morning, and welcome to St. Gertrude's Parish in Edgewater. Today is the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The Mass parts today are from the Mass of St. Anne, which is found in the white inserts in your Breaking Bread hymnal. The music compositions for today's live-streamed Mass are used with permission under License A728690. 
Please rise, greet those around you, and join us in our opening hymn, This Day Was Made by the Lord, number 576, in your Breaking Bread hymnal, number 576. Morning. Morning. We begin this celebration as we begin all good things. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And may the grace and peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. We are called to pen the vineyard of the Lord, who will judge our effort at the end of time. Lord Jesus, sower of the seed, Lord, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, Lord of the field and vine, Christ have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, God's fruitful harvest, Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And we join with the angels as we sing. Bless you, we adore you, we glorify. 
almighty and ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpasses the merits and the desires of those who entreat you. Pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. If all those children going to Children's Liturgy of the Word to please come forward. Good morning. Good morning. Are we awake? Some of you are, some of you aren't, huh? When you want something from your parents, what do you do? What do we do when we want something? We ask, right? We ask kindly. Today our second reading is about asking God for things that we need, the real things in life. If you want to take the book and lead everyone, go in God's peace, all of you. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewn out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now, I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge. Give it to grazing. Break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. And the people of Judah are his cherished plants. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed. For justice, but hark the outcry. The word of the Lord.
grain from Egypt you transplanted. You drove away the nations and planted it. It put forth its foliage to the sea. It shoots as far as the river. Every passerby plucks its fruit. The boar from the forest lays it waste, and the beasts of the field feed upon it. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of His right hand. The vineyard of A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence And if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. be with you. With your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priest and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put an edge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to the tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, and they said, they said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in scriptures, The stone that the builder rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has done, this has been done, and it's wonderful in your eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I suspect that most of us have come here this morning filled with questions, petitions, and prayers. You know, there's a lot of bad news out there these days. Yesterday, another war, Hamas and the Israel. We have the Ukraine war. And there's many other wars going on all around the world. There are carjackings, shootings, Poverty levels are going higher, disasters, tragedies, political strife with little hope of resolution in the horizon. Yesterday I found myself reluctant to even pick up the newspaper or to turn on the television because it just seems like there's bad news after bad news. And in that I'm sure you're like myself, you often have to stop and say, where is God in all of this? Where is God in all the midst of this chaos? Where is God in the midst of our needs and our petitions and our prayers? Have you ever thought, I want to make a switch today for us, have you ever just thought, that maybe God is reacting the same way we are. Have you ever just thought about that? That maybe God is just tired of bad news after bad news? Do you ever think maybe God is disappointed that he's not generated a better harvest or yield? Have we ever thought in terms of how God must see what's going on as well? Because he gave us this gift called free will. Maybe God is just dis- disappointed, as all we are at times. In these ancient parables from the first reading today and today's gospel, in these ancient stories, maybe there is a message for all of us today. If you look at this first parable, the vineyard, in our first reading, we know that God spared nothing. He spared nothing for the vineyard. He made us the best. 
He gave us the best. He put the best out there. God has done that for all of us. But yet, our yield is often wild and often quite sour. This parable in the first reading and in today's gospel remind us of two things. First, first, that God has created us and he's given us the very best. But the second thing in today's parable that we are reminded in both parables is that there will be a day that we will be accounted for. There will be a day when you're going to be asked, what have you harvested? What have you yielded? How have you used the gifts that God has given to you? How has the world grown more in the love of God? You're going to be at some point accountable. Someday, you're just going to be asked, what have you done? Now, you might think that both of these parables and kind of leave us kind of, you know, down. But St. Paul, in our second reading today, really, please take another look at that today. St. Paul, in today, gives us that, that hope Paul tells us today, whatever your need is, whatever your petition is, whatever you're asking of God, don't be afraid. Bring it to God. Bring it to God. Because, you know, we're getting to certain points, I guess, in our life that we either become indifferent, we say, you know what, we can handle this. Obviously we can. Or we say we really don't need God. But the fact is we do. And so St. Paul gives us this wonderful glimmer of hope. He says, Don't be afraid. Bring it to God. Bring your prayers. Bring your petitions. Bring your questions. God is always there for us. He's offering us the very best. Will you give back the same? Please stand, and together let us profess our faith in the God in whom we love. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. Our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and a life of the world to come. Amen. St. Paul instructs us to present our needs to God in petition, petitions that are full with gratitude. That the church produce fruit for the kingdom of God through acts of love, humility, and compassion We pray to the Lord. Lord, We pray to Holy Spirit for the synodal participants gathered in Rome. We pray for them with Pope Francis as they listen and reflect upon the needs of our church and the path we must take as witnesses to Christ in the world today. Let us pray to the Lord. That refugees and immigrants be welcomed as children of God and receive protection and assistance they need, let us pray to the Lord. 
we pray for all the faithful departed, especially Polino Mora, Bishop Kevin Birmingham, and for our Mass intention, Joseph and Michael Lakowski. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for Father Mike Bradley and for all who are running the marathon this weekend. May they have stamina, fueling, and energy for today. We pray to the Lord. We pray for a peace, especially now between between Israel. Let hatred be turned into love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God who created heaven and earth, protect what you have planted. Guide your people in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Please join us in our offertory hymn found in your Breaking Bread book, I Am the Bread of Life, number 329. my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father, the Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. <laughs> accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and that through these sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changes of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set humanity over the whole world and all of its wonders to rule in your name over all that you have made and forever to praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Who comes to 
And all of you created rightly give you praise through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. By the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun of its set into its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts which we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and gave, giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Until you come. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblations of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and be filled with this Holy Spirit and become one. May he make us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain the inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Ignatius, St. Jerome, St. Gertrude, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servants Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, and with all the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom, and there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever.
together we pray in those words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let's share a sign of peace and love with one another. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Join us in our communion hymn, The Prayer of St. Francis, found in your Breaking Bread hymnal, number 534, 534.
and scatter the good seed on the land, but it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand. He sends the snow in winter, the warmth to swell the grain, the breezes and the sunshine, the soft, refreshing
So thank the Lord. Let the church say amen. amen. Thank you, the choir. Just a few parish announcements. Uh, Alan Streisick and his wife are in the back of the church today, Suzanne, and they are representing ECRA, which is the Edgewater Community Religious Association. They're doing a community needs assessment. They have iPads in the back of the church, and if you'd like to fill out a survey with them, please do so after church today. I would like to thank everyone uh, who participated yesterday in the Parish Fun Run Walk Marathon. Uh, and if you didn't see any, you can see on YouTube, Father Mike Bradley did a great interview uh, on Channel 7 with some of the parishioners. So uh, you tune in and also the, uh, Channel 9 as well and Fox uh, Television. I called Father Mike at a quarter to five this morning. And I wrote, or I texted him, I should say, and I said, Mike, I said, I finished my marathon, go do yours. <laughs> and I'm told he's doing about 14 minutes an hour, or miles, so continue to keep Father Mike in prayer. If you didn't have a chance to sponsor Father Mike in his donation, which goes all to the Heart to Heart Ministry, in the back of the church there are still some envelopes and forms and a basket in the back if you'd like to participate. But really, thank you to Father Mike and to everyone who made the Parish Run Marathon such a great success this weekend. So to all of you, applause. I would like to just add at this time, this marathon also here at the parish on other ends as well. Yesterday we had baptisms. Today we have baptisms. We have blessing of the animals also this, after, or this morning. And we have a wedding this afternoon. So it's a marathon for us all, and, but it reminds us of all the good things God has around us and blessing St. Gertrude with. Thank you. Please stand. Grant us, Almighty God, that we be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume, through Christ our Lord. Amen. If together we could say a Hail Mary for true peace in this world. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Peace. Pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us bring Christ's peace to this world. Thanks be to God. Have a great week. Please join us in our closing hymn. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, found on page 732, 732.